well, to get access to this infamous prefrontal cortex, because in recent years, more and more um, thought has been given to the notion that the prefrontal cortex uh, is responsible for a whole lot more, maybe than was uh, initially appreciated. Um, I think what people need to understand is that you don't just have access to a brain area if only because it's not... Uh, um, because it doesn't have a lesion, right? Because if we look at things medically, we'll say, well, everything's functioning well if there's no lesions, if there's no insult to the anatomy. But when we look at things more functionally, what we'll see is, okay, well, you know, this area of your brain is not injured, but maybe it could be stimulated, maybe it could be activated. And then how we would do that is, well, if you look at the lower part of the brain, so brainstem or sensory areas, as you've mentioned in the posterior aspect of the brain, what people need to understand is that all of these are m mostly and, and strongly activated in infancy, right? Between zero to two years old, and let's even include uh, in utero. So what we're saying is if that's not done at the time where it was the most, where you got the most payback out of it, you can always do it later. Uh, it's just that to be aware that if you have these deficits of movement early on, because that's really the only way you have to wire this brain from zero to two, right? You, you can insist on your kid appreciating Shakespeare, but chances are it's just going to be, you know, like they need to move to turn on that brain. What would you say in your practice that you've seen uh, that are maybe some missed steps in infancy that can lead to having a harder time turning on that prefrontal cortex? Mm. I think what you're saying is, is key. Movement is really key. Uh, and, and I know you're, you're, you're big on pr uh, primitive reflexes. I think those are something that, that, are, that is very important to, to examine. And I'm, you know, you've been doing this a while, uh, as I have, and, and you can see how, uh, quote, quote, treating different uh, movement parameters can have an influence not only on how somebody stands and how they move and how they interact with their environment physically, but it has an effect on their emotions and, and how they think, as we were saying earlier. Uh, and then there's a whole other aspect uh, that influences brain behavior, and that's really from, um, you know, the, 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 the family dynamic or, or, or mm -hmm. parents, right? So, so you know, the, the, the things that, that affect us the most or that, that uh, are are most influential on our brain development and on the, the development of, of our human brain as a, as a species has been movement, you know, and the ability to, to resist gravity, stand on two legs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but also the social aspect is, is very important. So, you know, when you look at the, the whole evolution of our species and leaving the, the plains of the, in, in Africa, these are, we needed to work together, right? The, the social bonding, uh, as a community is very important. And of course, the most important social bonding of all is, is the bonding that we have with our parents. And, and, and it's like you said, like the, it all starts in utero. Like we clearly know now that a, a pregnant woman who is under stress, you know, we know that alcohol is not good for the fetus. We know that, you know, nicotine, smoking is not, but stress is is overlooked and it's very clear with research of of women who are in you know abusive relationships when they're pregnant or or times of war uh you know the the stress of of different situations can have a, a dramatic impact on the the development of of the fetus in its most crucial time right when it's still in utero and we we know you know the last the last um quote, quote, modern day crisis that we had in, in, in Quebec was the, the ice storm, right? When we go back to, to 98, when we were all confined, we had no electricity, there was no food on the shelves and all this. And, and there's actually interesting studies that show that the kids that were born of pregnant women in that period actually had delays in language, had delays in motor development, uh, behavioral problems. So it's, huh. it's really, uh, you know, we talk about the stress of all this COVID stuff. And, and, you know, I often think of those, the women, the, the women that are pregnant right now, this is a crucial time for them to look at how they're dealing with it, to, to look at the relationship with, with their husbands. That, that's another, you know, interesting thing is once this is, this has been repeated over and over again, the, 
the marital satisfaction or the, the, the satisfaction that you have in a relationship before and after the birth of a child, right? And, and, and it's- You mean it changes? <laughs> <laughs> Just wait, do you have any kids, Matt? No. <laughs> okay, <you're ready>. Not <laughs> yet. <laughs> this is as, as uh, wisdom from beyond, okay? <laughs> But, but the, uh, the research is clear that, that um, you know, if, if you ask people how, how happy they are in their relationship, you know, it's at an X level. And then after the birth of their child, it just plummets. It goes way, 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 way down. And, and it's, uh, you know, parents know this. Parents know that it's not easy. You know, and, and, and this is, you know, the happy pictures of my new baby on Facebook behind the scenes it's you know the reality is for i think it's like over 80 percent or 80 percent of couples it's hard it's not easy and and there's actual you know studies that show that if if um new parents have counseling before they actually have their child it, it has a dramatic impact on their happiness and 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 by default it's going to have a tremendous impact on on how that child is raised and how uh the, the family dynamics or the climate in, in the household affects the development of their brain. I mean, we could, there's a lot of interesting research on, on animal studies that show, you know, at an early age, how, how these sorts of things, how comfort, safety uh, relate to the development and how it, how it ultimately affects later in life, the person's emotional states. 